Hello, this is Dr. Gay. This is a case of a college athlete who had pelvic pain, and they weren't sure if it was from the hip or maybe a muscle tear or a hamstring sprain or a groin pull. So they were wondering what was going on. So we did an MRI of the whole pelvis just to take a look. And on the pelvis, we see several things. We did a big field of view so you can see lots of anatomy. And in the top here, we see the sacrum, which is this band here. This is the right side. This is the ilium and this is the left ilium, they come together to, call, uh, to form the sacroiliac joints. Again, so here's the sacrum in the middle, and the ilium in the outsides. Here's the left SI joint, looks great. The right SI joint looked great. And we also can see the hip joints. Here's the right hip joint, here's the left hip joint. You can see the same things here. We came down a little bit lower to get a better look. And on the right hip joint, you notice the femur was nice and round, the femoral head. And there's a little band of cartilage around the periphery of this bone, this cup called the acetabulum, and that is the labrum, and the labrum looked good on both sides, so no um, evidence of any significant abnormalities there. So we kept on looking at the muscles around, they looked good. There was no effusion in the hip joints, so we kept on looking for the hamstring tendons. Now the hamstring tendons come, across, come off the pubic rings. There's a, a pubic ring, there's a pubic bone up front right here, and then along the under part, this is called the ischium, and this whole thing makes a ring, we call it the pubic ring, but the ischial part down here at the bottom, you can see these bands coming off. This is the hamstring tendons. So here's the hamstring tendon on the right here coming off, here's on the left hand side, and the hamstring tendons look good. This is another view of the hamstring tendons. This is the right hamstring tendon origin, and here's where the tendons are. There's three of them together here, and three of them together blended here on the left, but both of those look just fine. We took a look at the thigh muscles here, is the proximal right thigh, this is the femur, the femoral shaft look good, Here's the femoral head. So the last thing we looked at was the symphysis pubis, which is right here. This is where the pubic bone on the right and left come together. I just zoom this up. Here's the left pubic bone, right pubic bone, and right here is the symphysis pubis. And there's a little bit of superior protrusion right here, which is not normal. A little bit of arthritis developing, and right here in the middle part, we see a normal area of brightness, vertically oriented. This is a normal little area of fibrocartilage that cushions between the, the two bones, and that's normal. They call it the primary cleft. But there's another one down here that's even brighter that is not normal. So this, some people call this a secondary cleft. Really what it is is tearing of some ligament and tendon attachments to the inferior periosteum. So this pubic bone comes down here, it articulates right here, and then along the undersurface there's an adductor longus tendon that attaches it up here and also some ligaments that hold this together and right where they attach to the bone they're peeled off as a um, an avulsion type peel injury of the ligaments from that periosteum and so this is what they call this is what's causing their pubic pain and it will cause instability um, of the symphysis pubis and pain which is what they call pubalgia so this was a finding in this college athlete and it was right-sided which uh, went along with their pain syndrome Sometimes patients can have marrow edema on both sides of the joint. This patient did not have significant marrow edema. And sometimes the tears can be more extensive and there can be offset of the, the bones here, which I don't see. So that is it. Thank you very much.